Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Gabriel, just another fan TV. Back at you another video. Like the content of this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Like the content of this channel, go ahead and hit subscribe, man. Uh, I'm out here, Florida, uh, early Saturday morning. Uh, about to go to uh, Disney World in a little bit. Yeah, yesterday was a little crazy. Had to get up at 2 a.m., flight by 5, landed in Florida at 8. Tired the whole day, but kicking in with the family, right? So I got a little bit of time right now. So we're going to talk about the Ravens and the Dolphins game. And, uh, you know, just give a preview of what's going on, right? So as far as the Miami offense versus this Ravens defense, uh, I looked at two of last game. 23 for 33, 270, and a touchdown. Their run game didn't really get off. In total, they had 23 carries, 65 yards as a team. The highest leading rusher was Chase Edmonds, 12 carries and 25 yards. Then, obviously, we get into that receiving core. Tyree Hill, Jalen Waddle, 8 for 94 for Hill, uh, 4 for 69, and a touchdown for Jalen Waddle. So, obviously, that's where the strength lies for this team. Is in that is in that passing game right now at least. So when I look at this game, right, <laughs> Miami to me wants to play in a way where they keep Tua ahead of the chains, don't put too much on his plate and things like that. So what the Ravens have to do is attack this Miami's offensive line. Now Teron Armstead, they're all pro, you know, Pro Bowl left tackle. Looks like he's probably going to play. He was he's questionable as of right now. But there were some things where a couple of days ago where he wasn't practicing, so he's not 100% ready to go, all right? Um, their right tackle, Austin Jackson, they just put him on IR. So the Ravens have an advantage there once again. Similar to how it was in the Jets game, you got to take advantage of a team weakness. And right now the Dolphins' weakness is this offensive line isn't very good, okay? So this, this last game versus the Patriots, okay? Even with Austin Jackson still playing, Teron Armstead out there, the Patriots had three sacks, six tackles for loss, and seven quarterback hits. So they got the tour multiple on multiple occasions, all right? And we saw what the Ravens did versus the Jets. The Ravens could do the same thing again versus the Dolphins. Uh, this offensive line wasn't that great to begin with, but now you have a left tackle who's uh, who's hampered by an injury, and you now you have a right tackle who is going to be missed. So they're going to have a backup guy in there anyway. So the Ravens have an opportunity to really attack this offensive line. Now, obviously, it's not going to be that simple. It's not going to be that easy. Um, but in my opinion, the Ravens have to make the Dolphins more dimensional, which sounds kind of crazy saying that I want them to lean on tour in that passing game. But I don't want to be where they had where the run game was an option. Last, last, like I said, last week versus the Patriots, they showed that they couldn't really get off on running. Just kind of how the Ravens had struggles running the ball as well. Now, Mike McDaniel comes from San Francisco. You would have to assume that a lot of stuff he's doing was a lot of stuff he did over there and that, you know, he wants to have the run game heavily involved. So now you take that run game out, you got to lean on Tua some more. And if the Ravens lose because Tua has an amazing game, um, you kind of have to accept that because that's the, that's the outcome. That's the possibility that you want. You don't want the Dolphins to be able to run for 100, 150 yards and you never put any pressure on their quarterback. All right. Now, with that being said, this Ravens defense is going to have a test on their hand when it comes to these wide receivers. We just, I just said, Tyreek Hill, 8 for 94, had a really good game. He bailed two out a couple times. Tua, Tua didn't have any interceptions, but I saw a couple of passes that could have been picked off that Tyreek Hill made some good plays on. Jalen Waddle, uh, kind of like a skinny post slant kind of thing where he just went across the middle, split the safeties, and he took a, maybe a 10, 15-yard completion. He took it for 42. So they have explosion on the outside. And, looks we saw Jalen Waddle a little bit when we played him last year, okay? So we know that he's a talent. And, obviously, we can look at the numbers that Jalen Waddle had last year, that he's a talent. I believe he had over 100 catches as a rookie. You know, he's big time. So what the challenge is for the Ravens is that the fact that Marlon Humphrey was limited in practice. He's listed as questionable right now. I think he'll play. Brandon Stevens is going into the game. He, he's like, a, he might not go. Marcus Peters... He was a full participant in practice, I believe, yesterday. And, uh, well, no, limited yesterday, but he might have been a full participant the day before. So the Ravens could have some injuries right now at cornerback versus a team that is explosive at wide receiver. And that could be an issue. Now, I did a video about TJ Carey. The obviously, it's not TJ Carey. I don't know if they'll break him up for this game. But Harbaugh did mention that the young guys are going to play, whether that's special teams or on defense. And that, and that means Pepe and Taylor Armour Davis. So they're going to be in for a big test, right? 
uh, right off the bat. So I think Marlo is going to be out there. It's just depending on who's going to be the guys on the outside. I think Marlo could find himself in the slot a lot, especially depends on who goes in there and who he can match up against. Um, now, with that being said, at least the Ravens do. I do feel better about the Ravens on the back end as far as their safety play. Chuck Cluck had a really, really good game um, versus the Jets. Now, I'm not talking about him covering anybody, but just being a solid force in the middle of the field, I think that can help out. And then Marcus Williams had an interception, and he obviously he can play that deep center field where, you know, we don't want to get beat over the top by Tyreek Hill, by Jalen Waddle. So Marcus Williams uh, allows the defense an extra safety blanket back there where, you know, he can maybe cover some things up that might be mistakes on the back end. Um, so with McDonald, um, I feel now with the Ravens defensive coordinator, excuse me, Mike McDonald, I feel a little bit more comfortable going into this game just because, there, in my opinion, we won't see as much uh, man cover to say, you know, we was going, we still had Wink Martindale, right? This kind of game would scare me a little bit more because we would be putting our corners who may be injured, may not have our best guys out there, and man on man coverage against two uh, elite, pretty good to elite wide receivers. You know, Tyreek Kill's elite. We'll give Jalen Waddle pretty good right now. Okay, so with with uh McDonald, he's going through a lot of different looks at at Tua. Some man, some zone, some blitz. Um, I think what he did versus the Jets was good. He mixed it up well, and he's gonna let the defensive line eat. Okay, so I look for a guy like a Dafi Owe to have a better game. I look for Justin Houston, you know, and then also uh, Travis Jones should be back. So now that Ravens interior rush that they got so much pressure on the Jets is going to add another guy who can add that same kind of pressure. So we saw uh, Matt Abike in the backfield had a great game. We saw Michael Pierce, Roger Washington, Calais Campbell all get hits on Joe Flacco, right? And some of them even get completed sacks, right? So you add Travis Jones to the mix, the Ravens have a good defensive line that should be able to put pressure on this Dolphins front. And, um, you know, these seven quarterback hits that the Patriots got, the Ravens should be able to get at that mount or even more and you know hopefully they can get more than three sacks as well right um now the ravens offense versus the dolphins defense is probably the main storyline going into this game based off of what happened last year um brian flores is no longer there but the i'm uh, no, sorry i'm about to say the pages but the dolphins will do the some of the similar things that brian flores did just because they have a lot of same personnel. And just because he's not there doesn't mean that I, that identity isn't still with that team, right? Um, now, the Ravens have to have a counter for it. I mean, that's the obvious statement. It's the obvious thing to say. But that's just not on the players. That's on the scheme as well. Greg Roman did some good things on, on Sunday versus the Jets, right? I know we don't like Greg Roman and things like that. But, you know, you got to give credit where credit is due, okay? Um, the, the two of the touchdowns, the play to Duvernay, um, the second touchdown to Duvernay, and the the bond to Rashad Bateman, both good play designs. Even though the second bond, even the bond Rashad Bateman was kind of a blown coverage, it's still a nice play design that that put pressure on the back end of the defense, and the Ravens made them pay. Um, that's what they're gonna have to do. The Ravens versus a team that's gonna run some man cover, some zero blitz type of looks. You got to get your receivers open. You got to scheme them open. So that means bunch line the receivers up so they can't get pressed. Uh, motion, th different things that keep the defense off balance. Now, whether or not Greg Roman will do these kind of things, I don't know. He tried some of these things in, in the game last year, and it wasn't until <laughs> end of the third, fourth quarter that any of these things really started to work. And this is where I'm looking at one guy, okay? And I just mentioned his name, and that's Rashad Bateman. Rashad Bateman was the only receiver last year in that Dolphins game that could really make an impact because he was able to beat the one-on-one -on -one coverage, uh, he was quick off the line, strong hands, and he was really dependable for Lamar Jackson at the end of that game. That was the game to me that said, okay, Rashad Bateman can eventually lead this team as a receiver. Uh, I was really encouraged by what, what I saw from Rashad Bateman that game. Now, he's going to need another game like that. What he did versus last week versus the Jets wasn't his greatest outing. We got to be completely honest, okay? Now, listen, he caught the big bomb touchdown and things like that, so that's great. But before that, we had some concentration drops. Uh, you know, ball going through his hands. You got to be better. All right. When the ball comes your way, when LeBron actually throws the ball to you, he's got to be able to depend on you. All right. And that's the thing that we were supposed to be getting when we go from Hollywood to, to Bateman. Even though Hollywood, I think his drops are kind of overrated. He had really one bad game versus Detroit. Uh, but with Bateman, we're going to need to see that kind of quality. Hey, with Duvernay, 
we're gonna need to see that kind of quality. Because look, the Ravens, um, one of the Ravens receivers is probably gonna be out this game. Uh, James Boucher is doubtful, right? So he didn't play that much in the, in the Jets game anyway. But the only reason I'm bringing it up is because that means like a guy like Duvernay is gonna have to play even more snaps, all right, and get and get and get open again. Now the guy, another guy I'm looking at is obviously Isaiah Likely. Isaiah Likely has to be able to get on the same page with Lamar Jackson because like the timing was a little bit off. And then when the ball is thrown to you, also catch it. Now, there were some plays where it was good coverage, right? And Lamar was trying to hit him in a spot where he could catch the ball, and the defense made a good play. You know, I can't, you can't always say he's supposed to catch everything as a receiver. You know, sometimes catches just are tough. But at a couple of the preseason and what he did, this is the kind of game where he has to shine. Because if the Ravens, I'm sorry, if the Dolphins are going to pressure Lamar Jackson at any kind of rate close to what they did last year, He's going to need his receivers to bail him out sometimes and make tough catches, make great plays. And likely he did that in the preseason. So now we just need to see that in the regular season. Um, as far as who the Dolphins have planned, I believe Byron Jones is on their IR. So he's out, you know, the first four games of the season. So the Ravens won't see Byron Jones. Now, that doesn't mean that there's any uh, break back there. You know, obviously they still have Xavier Howard, Javon Holland, who gave the Ravens all kinds of trouble last year is still back there. So uh, it's still a test. They still have to um, show and prove against this kind of defense. Now, I will say this. I'm looking at the the Dolphins and the, the Patriots box score from uh, their game last time. And the Dolphins defense had two tackles, sorry, two sacks, four tackles for loss, and three QB hits. So they didn't get a tremendous amount of pressure on Mac Jones. Now what they did do is they did turn they did uh turn the ball over him twice. Strip sack, uh maybe for a touchdown, I believe, and the interception. So these are the kind of things that Lamar Jackson has to avoid. This Dolphins defense is still a good defense. It's still where, you know, they can make plays with the football. So the Ravens, um, they have a test on their hands, right? I think that the Dolphins sorry, the Jets game was a good test for the Ravens, and they overcame a slow start to push out. Right uh, in the second half, this game. Let's get over the slow start. Lamar Jackson mentioned that you know it's on him uh, to uh, get the Ravens to the line faster. He said the play calls all along, so it's on him and Greg Roman. We'll, we'll put it like that. Shorten the play calls. Also, Lamar get guys to the line faster, and let's play with some different tempo. Let's change it up versus the Dolphins. Let's see what happens. And also, let's not make the first quarter a complete wash. Let's get out to a good start. When the Ravens were so good in the, you know, the 2019 season that we that we all like to mention because it was a great year, they got out to quick starts. They didn't have this slow, sluggish feeling that's been kind of following the team the last couple of years. Hopefully, this is the kind of game where we can start to get out of that and have a quick start. So that's my preview for the game. Uh, maybe tomorrow morning I'll drop like three keys to victories uh, for, the, for the Baltimore Ravens, and uh, you know we'll go over it like that, man. It's your boy Gabriel, just another fan TV. I'm out.